Black Power was good. Coming to y'all a little bit later tonight. It's been a super long day. You know, the end of super long week, exhausting week. You know, all the way from um, driving back through them fires along the coast last week, on up to the action in Koreatown, on up until the day and up to 10 minutes ago. But um, first and foremost, thanking everyone who came to court this morning. Brother Mac Capone, my big brother Abram, my brother Dino, sister Maat, my sister Caramel, my brother ATL. Salute and appreciate all of y'all. Appreciate everyone who put that energy up for me. My wife, my sister Kamani, uh, brother Mac. You know, really appreciate all of that. And for now, it has worked. Today, basically, um, the city attorney claimed to present new discovery to. The public defender, which to me appeared to be basically some of the same stuff they discussed when I was still in custody, but for now the case has been continued until February 1st, 2018. And I do hear what some of y'all been telling me as far as your take on what actually transpired in court today, because we do know a lot of what happens in court is scripted out. But my concern, um, more so than my own personal freedom, or even them um, attempting to restrict, you know, my right to bear arms and be able to defend myself is the effect, you know, it will have on my family, but also on the movement right now. Because, you know, again, they have multi-billion dollar plans they are looking to unfold, and for the most part, we have had some success in pushing back. So, you know, I know they were kind of like me out the way, but, you know, we got six weeks to look at it figure out moving forward and deal with it. Um, I shared a video on the Africa Town group where our sister Caramel went live like moments after she left us from court. You know, she went not even a, a, about a mile away over there on Arbor Vita and uh, witnessed a, a, a traffic accident. You know, she said a car went zooming by her and they ended up crashing into a wall. But the reason I shared it was because the car uh, disintegrated. The people in the car were ejected. Uh, a woman, you can see her on the sidewalk. Then if you look kind of on the left side of the screen, you'll see the brother where he was ejected, but the whole back end of the car blew up. So, yeah, I'm not really sure what happened, uh, but, you know, hopefully their family identified them, went and checked on them. Caramel was saying once she separated with them, they did regain consciousness. They both had... Um, head trauma so you know we most definitely put in energy and for their um healing and return you know to a, a normal life but um yeah so you can't go on and check that out as far as our comrade lone wolf he did get out yesterday he is reunited with his family another one of our comrades was able to hold his possessions so right now it looks like um Lone Wolf and his family may move forward with a, a lawsuit against the police because again He was standing with us as we were standing witness to them Making an illegal search on a young couple they had pulled over. It was actually the LA Metro Division uh, For whatever reason, you know, they're over there in Africa town um, You know, that's usually Southwest but um, as y'all kind of seen the past few months they come in with a lot of the racist psychopathic white boys pressing the line and um that's kind of what unfolded a couple nights ago but at one point they they attacked a few of us and lone wolf happened to be one of them and um you know they took him in he has been released so we'll be moving forward with that also i want to thank william re if i'm pronouncing your name correctly but he saw or call for a translator as far as the SBS broadcast showing our accident in Koreatown last Friday. And he uploaded uh, what we believe to be an English translation of that video. So we share that also. You can find it in the Africa Town group. But, um, you know, they, for the most part, if that translation is correct, you know, broadcasted pretty much why we was there and what happened. Um, and at this point, as far as the action in Koreatown, we are hearing from different individuals that 
it has kind of inspired more people to want to um, find resolution with what is happening with these liquor stores. Um, we just found out about an hour ago, the liquor bank has had their um, license revoked. So the liquor bank will probably be closing soon. But that was a decision by the um, city council. It appears in the article, I haven't fully read it yet, but Mar Marquise Dawson may have led that charge. Um, we've been learning the past few months that Marquise Dawson and Karen Bass were some of the individuals from the community coalition back in the 90s who led um, charges against liquor stores. So he's very familiar with what's going on and it appears as though this overall climate right now with people you know, calling out this situation, but also with the gentrification happening, it's having some type of effect. Because again, we know as white folks come, a lot of these, you know, shady ass businesses they've been having over here doing business with us, white folks ain't gonna tolerate. So that also most definitely um, is very likely a contributing factor in that. But um, just lastly, you know, some folks are asking as far as us, you know, not going live like we were. But um, right now, as we going through these next phases, you know, it's not really a lot to show. As far as what we're doing, um, you know, some of this, you know, we got to kind of move without and, and communicate without the other side knowing exactly what's happening. But, you know, we most definitely want to keep those of you in other cities, states, and countries who've been following us, you know, involved with what's happening. So we will, um, you know, the best we can continue to, um, you know, use social media in a means in which you could be a part of it. But we also encourage you to go ahead and get involved in your communities with some of the issues, you know, we've been dealing with here. So again, as always, just saluting all of y'all. There's been a um, major support in this directly, whether y'all have come out and gotten involved, whether you've been in the background, whether you've been online, whether you've been peripheral support, whatever, whether you're in other cities doing your thing, but um, we thank y'all. Um, people have been reaching out to us as far as extending this situation nationally and possibly even internationally, because right now it is the time as the gentrification, the genocide, the displacement against blacks and African is happening worldwide so um you know we look to build with all of you who are sincere about what's happening um not those who are just looking to cash in because again that's what always uh, sabotages our success but um you know the africa town coalition is still in full effect blacks and 365 is still in full effect and we're still looking for more of you to come get involved with us i want to thank everyone again for um helping us with the Break Bread program this past Sunday. You know, it was another success. We actually served two different meals. We were told even before we served our first meal, it was another sister who had came before us and served a, a, a enchilada dinner who said she'll be coming weekly now. So again, that end of it is great. Now we just gotta deal with the housing part of it, y'all. So again, salute to everyone, salute to the universe, the ancestors, and you know, let's continue to move forward. Black power.